Happy grade 11. So uh, welcome to, I guess, the last week that we're going to be doing work in this course. And technically, we have two weeks left, but uh, I think we'll wrap it up this week. Oh, you're going to miss this, right? I know I am. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, there's a couple of things uh, we just want to go over, but uh, with review and everything else, I, I just want you to notice actually one thing before I do anything else. I did post... I don't know why it's so small there. I did post answers to the uh, transformer worksheet. Okay, so if you want to check over that, uh, the answers are posted. Um, yeah, that's pretty straightforward though. And so for here, uh, we got one sort of question left in the course that we need to answer. And uh, uh, we look at this every year. And it goes like this, okay? Um, here I have a photograph of like uh, basically high voltage power lines, okay? And uh, the reason why they're put so high up and so difficult to access, and we have special insulators around the uh, where the wires get near these grounded towers, okay? You can sort of see them there, There's some there, okay? Um, yeah, the reason why is because they're, those power lines are incredibly dangerous. Okay. Um, there's some rubber insulation around the wires, but at a voltage at close to a half a million volts to a million volts, uh, rubber insulation will not protect you. Let's say you're wearing rubber gloves and you decide to touch one of those power lines, you're dead. Okay. Um, if the power line is energized, which means if it's got electricity running through it, you're dead. At a million volts, it, even if you get near it, like even if you were to get within, let's say, you know, 10 centimeters of the wire without touching it, it could kill you, okay? With a energy discharge similar to a lightning bolt, okay? So yeah, these high voltage power lines, extremely dangerous. And sometimes like, you know, I like students to ask questions, you know, and you might ask like, why do we transmit power at such extremely high voltages? Was well, a very good reason for it, okay? And uh, we're going to look at that reason today, and it's actually a type of calculation we do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we calculate the percentage of energy loss in the transmission lines. Okay, so here's how it goes. I'm going to underline this. Let's do two examples. Okay, number one. Um, let's say we want to keep the risks low. Okay, so let's say I need 240 volts to charge my Tesla, you know, or whatever. A house will need 240 volts for the dryer and 240 volts for the uh, for um, various other appliances. Like, let's say the dryer mainly. Okay, um, but if you have anything else, like an oven, usually there's 240 volts for that, like an electric oven. Okay, and uh, of course, if you have a, I have actually two more, 240, three more 240 volt uh, connections in my house. One for each electric vehicle that I'm charging. So one Tesla and one minivan, right, which is a plug-in hybrid. And then the pool pump and everything else also runs on 240 volts. So like I'll and plus the dryer, you know, and plus our stove. So uh, the rest are 120. Okay, so there's a center, trap a center tap transformer close to our house to give us both of those voltages, right? On every house, yours too, okay? But anyway, let's say we, trans like the thing about 240 volts is uh, rubber insulation, like the wire that charges my Tesla, I can touch that while it's charging, it's not gonna hurt me, okay? Um, yeah, it's no problem at all. It's uh, at 240 volts. I have no risk of electricity arcing through the rubber. Okay, at a million volts, watch out. <laughs> like, it's like the Van der Graaff machine that makes your hair stand up, right? Like, that's around uh, half a million volts on there. Now, it doesn't kill you because it's not very much current. Okay, it's only a, a tiny, tiny fraction of an amp when it discharges. And so that's not going to kill anyone. You know, maybe if you had a pacemaker or something, you wouldn't touch it. But, you know, if you're a normal person, it's not going to affect you at all, okay? 
Uh, so it's a tiny amount of current, but an extremely high voltage. But rubber gloves would not protect you from an electrical arc on the Van der Graaff because of the high voltage. Okay. So um, number one, let's say we want to use low voltages. Okay. So my Tesla charges at 48 amps. That's enough current to kill me. But at 240 volts, rubber gloves will protect me or the rubber insulation around the wire will protect me. So what if we transmit the voltage at 240 so I can charge my car? And let's do that all the way from the generating station. This, these pictures are taken from the Pickering parking lot, so it's a nuclear power plant here. Okay. So let's say we set the voltage. We can set it to whatever we want Okay, using a transformer, of course. So let's set the voltage to 240 volts, send it to my house, no transformer next to my house. I just take the 240 directly in, okay, and uh, do it there, okay? Now let's say the resistance in the power lines between my house and Pickering is a total about, of about, let's make it 10 ohms, okay? So that is the resistance in the power lines. And let's say the city of Ottawa, okay, the power utilization of the city, okay, not just my house, but the city in total that's being, let's say, powered by Pickering. Let's, uh, should I make it more realistic? Let's say it's like 200 megawatts. So that's 200 million watts, okay? So this is equal to 200 times 10 to the 6 watts. Now that's our, our real time right now this is what we're using let's say now it's probably that's probably a low ball you know it's probably a bit higher than that but whatever and you get the idea okay now my question for you is based on these figures calculate the percentage loss in the lines because the lines have some resistance in it 10 ohms there's going to be power loss in those lines how much power will be lost written as a percentage of the total power being generated. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to use these values. Okay. And I'm going to tell you the steps. So step one, you have to determine how much current Ottawa needs. So determine I for the city. So no problem. I equals power divided by voltage. Okay. So that'll be uh, 200 times 10 to the 6 divided by 240 volts. So now, I think you can imagine this is going to be an extremely high number. So 200 x 1 6 divided by 240 equals, I get um, 833 so I'm going to round it to the nearest whole number. Let's write it like this, 8.33 times 10 to the 5 amps. Okay. That, <laughs> okay. You could never do it this way. By the way, that current is so high that uh, you would need a massive wire for that. Okay. That is like hundreds of thousands of amps. Like hundreds of thousands of amps would require a massive, massive wire. Think of water flowing through a pipe, okay? Let's say you had millions of gallons of water flowing through a pipe, okay? Or hundreds of thousands of, of liters, let's say, in a second. Uh, that would require a pretty large pipe, okay, to carry all that water. Same thing with wire. You need a pretty thick wire to carry all that current. Um, you might notice that those pictures I showed you here, the wires aren't very thick, actually. Okay, so um, yeah, you'll see why that is in a moment. This is not how they do it, that's why, but anyway. That's step one, okay, step two. Determine the power loss. And the power loss is I squared, okay, R. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, power loss equals I squared R, okay, so we have that much current flowing through that wire of 10 ohms, and that's going to equal, like, as you can imagine, I square that current. Okay, and then times, what is it, 10 ohms? Yeah, times 10. I get 6.94 times 10 to the 12 watts. Now, 
the city is only using 200 megawatts. This is the, I'm going to write this as a function. <laughs> well, uh, forget it. I'll just, I'm just going to leave it like this. Anyway, that's 6.94 terawatts of power. That's more than the city is using. So in other words, your generator, okay, um, okay, the generator has to generate, um, most of its power is going into just offsetting power losses in the lines. Okay, step three, total power. See, the generator is not just powering the city. If the lines are going to lose, like, um, let's say my, my house needs 1,000 watts and the lines lose 100 watts. Well, the generator has to generate, therefore, 1,100 watts so that 100 can be lost in the lines and I get my 1,000 that I need. Okay, so same thing here. So the total power will equal the power from the city that the city requires from the generator plus the power loss in the lines. So I'm going to take this number 6.94 times 10 to 12. I'm going to add 200, exponent 6. And I get barely a difference at all. I'm going to write it down. I get 6. 0.9446 okay times 10 to the 12 watts okay and then finally I'm going to go over here step 4 the percentage loss okay so this is where you calculate oh, I'll just write it up here the percent loss this is the answer to the question the percentage loss will equal the power loss in the lines divided by the total power times 100%. This is not so much the way we do efficiency questions. This is how we do this is how we would do efficiency in power lines. That's how we do it, okay? All right, so now I'm going to save this number in memory that I used for my uh, total power. Okay, and then I'm going to times it by my power loss which was 6.94 exponent 12. Uh, yeah, okay. I get 99.9%. Actually, that's a zero there. So I get 99.9% .9 approximately, okay? So in other words, how much power is lost if I do it this way? Okay, at 240 volts, almost all of it, 99.9%. <laughs> in other words, the 0.01%, okay, or 0.1% of my power gets to the city. The rest is wasted in this massive wire that has to carry hundreds of thousands of amps. Well, obviously, okay, uh, let, like, let's be clear. Um, therefore, low voltage transmission is not possible, okay? There's just too much is near 100%, okay? All right, let's make one change. Let's use a transformer. We'll do the whole question again we'll make one single change. Let's step up the voltage, okay, to a very high number. Let's say about a million volts. So 1.0 times 10 to the six volts, or one megavolt, okay? So let's use a million volts. Let's keep everything else the same, the same power line, 10 ohms, okay? Uh, the same power requirements for the city, 200, Megawatts. The city still needs what the city needs, right? Which is 200 times 10 to the 6. Whoops. Watts. Okay. Now let's do our steps. All we did was make one change. So let's try increasing the voltage. Now increasing it to a million volts makes it dangerous. 
It means rubber uh, wire, rubber insulation will not protect the workers and stuff like that. And so you, you've now introduced a lot of risks, but you'll see why they have to do that. It's definitely worth it. So let's go through the steps. Step one, okay, I equals P over V. And if you look at this, because we use such a high voltage, we're gonna get a much smaller current. In fact, uh, well, we can see it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be 200. 200 exponent six divided by one exponent six is 200, yeah. You get 200 amps, just 200 amps. 200 amps is no problem. My Tesla, when I'm charging it, draws 48 amps. That's probably like uh, more than most, you know, other things in the house. Maybe your stove is on a similar level, but even the stove probably doesn't draw 48 amps. Okay, but you know, 48 amps is about, about 11,000 watts. Okay, when it charges. The uh, stove is probably about half of that. It's probably about 5,000 watts if you turn on all the elements. Okay, but 200 amps, that's no problem, right? You can have a very small wire carrying 200 amps. It doesn't have to be a massive wire. 800,000 amps is on another, <laughs> another story altogether, but 200 amps, you could have a wire. 200 amps, that's going to be enough to power our entire city. Okay, and that's a very small current. So that's very good. Step two, how much power loss is in the lines? Well, because we decrease the current by so much, by increasing the voltage, you get I squared R, but now I is only 200. 200 squared times 10 is about 400,000 watts. Now that might seem like a lot, but you know, you know, definitely a lot, but let's write it as a percentage. Okay, so let's do step three. Let's do our total power. It's going to be um, 200 times 10 to the 6 plus 400,000. Okay, so plus 200 exponent 6 equals. And basically you're going to get, uh, I don't know. 200 million and 400,000, so it's going to be 200400000 like this, or if you like, 2.004 times 10 to the 8, pardon me, watts. Okay, and then finally, we're at step 4, where we write the percentage loss is equal to 400,000 divided by 2.00004, sorry, 2.004 times 10 to the 8 times 100% to convert to a percentage, right? All right, let's do that. So 400,000 divided by 2.004 exponent 8 equals times 100. I get just 0 0.2, approximately 0. Point, it's it's 0.1996. So I'm going to just write 0.2%. So all we did was increase the voltage. The power utilization of the city hasn't changed, right? Okay. The everything stays the same, and basically we have turned the story completely around. In the first scenario at 240 volts, we waste 99.9% .9 of the power on waste heat in the power lines. But now if we increase the voltage to a million volts, now it's completely the opposite. Instead of only keeping 0.1%, now we're only wasting 0.2%, right? So it's just a tiny amount of waste. So this is extremely small, okay? And this is huge waste, okay? So therefore, to conclude, and I'm gonna, I want to write this as a conclusion. Um, we really must transmit power at very high voltages okay and then uh, over long distances And take all the proper precautions right and then we will also use 
transformers to step down to safe levels. in the city. And buildings. That's why every house has a transformer outside, okay, that steps down the voltage. From, uh, from the, in, on your house and street level, it's only around maybe 1200 volts there, steps it down to 240, right, for your house. Um, what happens is it gets stepped down in stages. So like the million volts will get stepped down to about 1200 volts in these transformer stations that you see around the city. And then that goes out to the neighborhoods and then they step it down again before it goes into your house. Okay. So um, yeah, and because transformers only work with alternating current, we must transmit AC, okay, for transformers to work. And that's why you have alternating current coming out of the plugs in the wall, guys, okay? Uh, we really must transmit it that way, okay? And that's why your computers need, like, these rectifying circuits to turn the AC into DC and, you know, step down the voltage again to 12 volts. But you know, long story short, that's why we uh, we have transformers. Now, this calculation I would normally put on a test, so just for your information. So you've got all your steps here because the test, the last test we'll have is open book. You're good. Uh, you won't have to worry about it. And uh, anyway, I like showing that calculation with the steps like this, and it gives you some sense of why we transmit power at such dangerous voltage. And by the way, if you ever see a transformer station, you see. It, it's surrounded, it looks like a prison, okay? It's got these big barbed wire fences like uh, surrounding it. You would never be so stupid to climb that fence or to try to get over that fence or cut the fence or whatever, get inside, do some vandalism or something like that. Those transformer stations are incredibly dangerous, right? Like the warning signs are there for your protection, the warning high voltage. No one, you know, like the only time they ever go into service or anything like that they have to like de-energize the lines, okay? And so like these things are made to simply operate. There's usually no one in there, but you would never actually want to touch those lines. Okay, and in fact, operators cannot service any of the lines without them being de-energized first. And if they were energized, they would die. Okay, so it's, uh, it's very important actually. Okay, in fact, like my solar power, which powers, that doesn't power our house, we feed the grid with it. If there was some guy working on the lines around here, you'd have to make sure that my solar panels were not feeding the grid because my solar panels will deliver, let's say 10,000 watts uh, on a sunny day like this, uh, that could kill him, okay? So if he thinks the line is not energized because like the company has shut down the power, but my solar panel is still generating power. But to be honest with you, there are several safety, like my, if my, uh, system detects that the grid is a power failure, then it stops feeding the grid automatically, okay, for safety reasons. It does that as an automatic circuit. And there's also a, a separate switch that Hydro can shut off just in case, okay, and, and that's part of the safety precautions that they install on the lines, okay. Some people, though, with, port with their own generator, they just plug it in and it's not connected properly like that, like my solar panels are, and they can actually injure people working on the lines in a power failure because their generator is not correctly connected to the grid, okay, to the system, and it could feed backwards into the grid and injure someone on the line. All right, so that's it uh, for this one. Now I want to show you what I have for you in terms of work. Uh, if you look at the outline here, we've finished everything. I told you that before, so all that's left is a review. Um, I did put an assignment on here. I'm going to show you that right now. Um, you can try this assignment. What I did was I uh, put a, just a couple of sampling of questions on here. I'm going to cancel out this one, like this second page here. Just forget that. Okay, uh, we're not going to cover that. 
thing. It was one of the things I was going to show you in class, so forget that. Um, yeah, the rest of these questions you should be able to answer. It's uh, just a couple of questions on motors, a couple of additional questions. The one that we just did on power loss in the lines is right here. That's uh, one, there's one other example like that. And I think there's an example in the textbook homework as well. Okay, so if you look at uh, the textbook homework, uh, power loss in the lines, I think maybe in here somewhere, there's a question on that. Anyway, so that's it. Now I also included last semester's test as a practice test for you. Okay, now your test would be very similar, just be done online. Lots of multiple choice this time. Okay, I think I'm going to make it largely a multiple choice test just to make it easier and quicker for me to mark it. So we don't have a lot of time for that. Like I have to enter your report card marks this week, but I will be able to update the marks with this test result. So it's worth it, you know. Uh, anyway, give it a try. I'll post the answers. And if you want to have one last uh, Zoom call, if you have any questions, we can do that this week. Uh, but yeah, now I the other thing, someone was asking me about an RST. I know that maybe some classes are doing it. We would have done a, a practical RST. Can't really do that. I was gonna maybe think of giving you an exam review. We're not gonna do an exam, but an exam review as an RST, and I think I'll do that. And I will just uh, get you to submit it uh, before, you know, the next week or whatever. And that's it, but we'll have a test this week Okay, I'm thinking um, maybe Wednesday, okay, this week for a test. And just go through these practice questions, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so multiple choice or just you type in the numerical answer, okay? So here's another one of the questions similar to the one that we just did. Only magnetism, no electricity on this test, by the way. So just everything we've done since magnetism. Here's a transformer question, and you can please ignore the bell question. Okay, I would have shown you that in class, but whatever. There's lots of other applications of electromagnetism, speakers, bells, and uh, oh, motors, and, you know, well, we did the motor, I guess, but, uh, but yeah. Okay, so uh, there you have it, guys. Shouldn't take too long since it's mostly multiple choice, and, uh, and that'll be it. So let's have a test Wednesday at 10 a.m., and maybe a Zoom call tomorrow if, if necessary. Okay, if, if anyone wants help, if uh, you need that. Um, and that's our plan for this week. And then I will uh, give you your final mark. And I will tell you whether or not you're going to get, like, the pre-pandemic mark or the post-pandemic mark, depending on which one is higher, right? Because that's that's the rule that we're using for now. So, you know, we'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll report your final mark to you. And then they're going to, I think, send your report cards next week sometime, at the end of next week. They're going to do it electronically. All right, that's it for today. And uh, enjoy your day, guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow.